Hi folks, thanks for joining me again. My name's Stephen Cronin. Welcome to another episode of My Watercolour Diary. Uh, I'm going to try and answer a few more of your questions again, your comments and queries and observations um, from recent paintings. Some are from uh, queries over on my YouTube channel, others from uh, videos over on uh, my Patreon site. So I'm going to kick off with a, an observation from Karen. Um, who says, I started watching you a couple of years ago because I realised I'd been throwing my work away because it started out looking like a mess. Yours too look messy in the beginning, but then the miraculous happens. So basically what Karen's referring to there is um, virtually all the paintings I do, I, uh, I, I tend to just wet the paper first and then just try and get as much sort of background colour um, as I whiz around the, the, uh, the palette try and get as much colour onto the paper as I, as, I, as I can, just to start the painting process off, really. Most of this colour will sort of um, sort of blend in together, and then what you find in, in watercolours especially, it might look very, very loud and bright at the start, but as it dries, it'll all soften off. So, although it looks a bit wild and messy at the start, Ultimately, when the, when it's dried and the painting's finished, it will have, it will have lightened, so it'll look a lot more subtle, and just like offer a nice sort of atmospheric backdrop to the scene that I'm trying to create. Another advantage to this method is a bit like um, if, if like authors with writer's block. Um, I've, I've heard a, a lot of, um, especially like beginners, but I suppose it could apply to anyone really who sits at a blank piece of paper. At the easel and they're, they're frightened to get started There's, they're very apprehensive about those first few strokes whether it's um, because they're scared that they're going to make a mistake or for whatever reason really if you just go straight in with the brush wet the paper and then just bash a load of color in almost with with hardly any thought process behind it it, it, it loosens you up and gets the thing started. And once you've started, like like with with a lot of things, it's it's getting started that's the problem. Once you've got the ball rolling, and there's a flow to the thing, it's a lot easier then to keep keep it going, get that momentum going. So I find that brushing in all this colour at the start really helps fire up your your sort of creativity levels and 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 sort of inspires you to really try and create that sort of masterpiece. Instead of just you know sitting there at a blank piece of paper, worried about your, your methodical, deliberate brush, brush strokes, whether you're making mistakes or not. So although it's not for everyone, um, it, it's definitely a, a method I, I like to do. To be honest, I always find that when I start off trying to paint sort of slow, methodical, um, step by step, and, and I'm, I'm really sort of slow with my brush. The paintings just don't turn out the same. I'm, I always find that the paintings, for some reason, they always turn out better when I'm going a bit wild at the start. So it, it works for me. Hopefully, it works for a lot of you out there as well. If you if following the, the tutorials, um, each to their own, really. So moving forward, next question: Aqua Symes asks, "Have you ever dabbled with acrylics?" Now, by a quite a remarkable coincidence. Yesterday I did my first acrylic painting for maybe three or four years, something like that. And I'll, I'll tell you what inspired me to, me to do that. Um, a, a, the previous painting was a, a winter scene and I'd used um, a painting I saw on the internet by, um, forgive me if I got his name wrong, I, th I think his name is Jose Salvaggio, I think I've got that right. Um, and it was a, a beautiful oil painting of this winter scene. I've used it before. And I've done it. I've done about two or three copies in the past of this painting because it's such a great composition. And I've tried to, you know, just just alter it, just to try and put my own little twist on things. But um, but after I'd done the watercolor. And I, I came across one of his demos on, on YouTube and I, and I watched it for about 10-15 minutes and loved his style and I thought I thought I'd have a go in oils at this this using the same the same scene but doing it in oils just to compare that against the watercolour. So 
I went into my garret. Now I haven't done all painting. About the same. So yeah, it's been a while. Um, it's probably been even longer than that. I, I don't even know if I've done all painting since we moved out. It's about six years ago. Uh, but anyway, I found I've got. I knew I'd got my old um, oil paints in the garage. So I dug them out because it had been so long since I last used them. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't get the tops off. They were absolutely stuck solid. So I thought, oh. So that was, I think they were Winton. They were like, they were like the Windsor and Newton. Um, the same brand of watercolours I use, but it's their oil range. But then I found my old Bob Ross uh, paints. Um, from when I had uh, my Bob Ross starter kit, that, that, that is great. For anybody like wants to have a go at oil painting, I, I would recommend getting the Bob Ross starter. Um, really, is you watch his videos. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you have watched Bob Ross in the past. Um, fantastic to watch. Very, very um, gently paced oils. Um, and his paints, they work really great on the canvases as well. I had all the same gear that he was using, and they work really, really well. Um, so I thought, oh, I'll try I'll try this painting with the Bob Ross oils. Unfortunately, I'd got no white. Um, I think I'd run out of white, and it, because it was a snow scene, it was quite a crucial colour. So I thought, well, I can't, I'll, I'll, I'll try and send off the, what colours I'm missing with Bob Ross. Um, and maybe use them Bob Ross paints um, sometime soon when I've got the, the full range of colours that I can use. But what I did find in the meantime, I found me uh, acrylics. So I dusted them down and did the same winter scene using acrylics. You can see it on my Patreon, if you if you head over there, you'll be able to see the painting um, and compare it with the watercolour. Um, I'm totally out of practice with the acrylic, so... I had a go. It didn't, you know, it didn't turn out too bad, but um, obviously the, the techniques are, are all different. And <clears throat> whereas watercolor generally you're going from light to dark, I think acrylics and oils, um, you're more going from from dark to light. It's, it's, it's doing it the other way around. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have another go with them because um, I and try and mix it up a little bit because I've been doing watercolours just exclusive watercolours non-stop um but I, I would like to mix it up a little bit more in the future and uh, just sort of alternate between the three mediums um especially the old especially yeah, the bob ross ones what i've what i've i don't think i've ever tried is using the bob ross oils but doing it in a different style to what bob ross did himself um so that would be interesting to see how, how that develops. But yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to doing more. A little bit of acrylics, but mainly I think definitely the oils. I'm I'm curious to see if I can use some of the watercolor techniques, maybe in in the oil paintings as well. So yeah, it would definitely be a it'll be um, interesting to see how that develops. So moving on, next question is from uh, Rosa Rabada. I hope I pronounced that right. And she asks, how did you begin studying painting? So if I take you right back to the very beginning, I remember as a kid at school, um, never really did much art at school. Obviously we did art, uh, but never really took to it. I think it's because I like a very specific style. Um, I like landscapes and I like them in a sort of loose impressionistic style. And that, we never did anything like that. It was, it was all still lives and subjects i just wasn't interested in or techniques and mediums it just didn't hold any sort of interest for me so never really took to art at school um but what i did do when i was at school during the summer holidays we always used to go around our nan's house and i always remember um tony hart take Hart, the program was called um fantastic uh, artists very very simple but very, I think, like a lot of a lot of art, very very simple techniques. But the the, the results were were wonderful. I always like watching artists, especially. It always seems like whenever we went on holiday somewhere, you'd have um, artists, especially like people doing caricatures, all that sort of thing. Um, there's a place we go quite regularly when we go down to St Ives. Um, there's a little a little gallery right there on the, on the harbour front, and often you can see the artists that work in there. And it's great watching them live, 
um, so many different varied styles and techniques and, 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 and subjects. It's very interesting to watch. But for me personally, the, the, the current sort of art um, journey that I, that I started was about 2006, I think it was. About 14 years ago now. Um, and I was I was in a car boot sale and I noticed uh, there was a watercolour starter kit. Uh, and I just thought, well, it looks interesting. I'll just give that a go and see, see what happens. So I started with these watercolours. Um, didn't really have a clue what I was doing, but again, I, th I think the techniques in that didn't really suit me very well. So I thought what I'll do, there was um, a thing called Love Film. I don't, I don't know, in the UK, I don't know if they have it anywhere else around the world, where you could rent DVDs through the post. They had about 30 watercolour tutorial DVDs from various artists. Um, and I watched a few of those. And it was when I watched the, the Ron Ranson DVD that suddenly, that, that, for the first time ever, I saw a style there and a technique and a method that was absolutely perfect for what I wanted to do. First time I saw it, and that's when it, that's when it really kicked on. So it was watching Ron Ranson. From there, um, Frank Clark was another one. For, for teaching from scratch, I'd say he, he was the easiest to follow. Brilliant teacher. Um, Bob Ross again was a another had another great style. So and what I've tried to do is incorporate my favourite styles and techniques from all the artists I've I've watched on the telly and through DVDs and whatnot and YouTube and all that, and try to combine it into one. Predominantly watercolour is what I've been doing. Um, maybe I'll be able to do that with the other mediums. I don't know. I don't know I'll see how it goes. But yeah, that's that's so basically how I began studying painting, and then what I try and do now is I, I, I try and use my own reference material a lot of the time. I would like to start painting outdoors. I've been saying that for years. A combination of weather and trying to find quiet spots as well. I, I wouldn't. I, I don't like it when people walk past you. I suppose I'd get used to it, but I, I don't like being watched when I'm when I'm working. So I use mainly my own reference material. Sometimes I'll just make them up as well. And then what I'll do to try and keep improving, I'll, I'll still go on the uh, go on um, the internet and look at other people's works and try and pick up little things here and there, it's just to try and constantly keep improving my technique and, and, and creative ideas. So I hope Rosa, that's given you a, 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 just an insight out of how I did start. Rosa has done a, a lot of other questions as well. Um, I'm going to go through them. In, uh, in in the next episode I'll say them for the next episode so um, so I'll leave it at that for now so th thanks for what uh, listening um, I hope hope you've enjoyed this uh, little discussion and uh, give you another insight into some of the thoughts and techniques and processes that I've been using in my paintings in recent times remember you can see all my latest work videos and, and paintings and, and writings and, and whatnot uh, over on my Patreon page. You can always leave leave questions and comments there if you'd like me to discuss anything in future uh, podcast episodes. I wish you all the very best of luck with your artwork and, and painting, whatever medium you're using. I hope you managed to just stay safe through these um, uh, very strange times we're living in at the moment with the, with the virus. Until next time, thanks for thanks for listening. Take care. Very best of luck with your art, and I'll see you again soon. <laughs>